There in the Kohala mist, we find the dancers of Nale Okoholoku as they return to the Merry Monarch Festival following a seven year absence. They will bring to the stage the saga of Hi'iaka as she travels to fetch Lohiao. While looking through Hawaiian language newspapers from nearly a century ago, Kumuhula Leo Loha Amina finds a version that tells of Hi'iaka's journey through Kohala. Talk about chicken skin for these Kohala girls. To find out years later, especially now, that in our own backyard, that Hi'iaka had gone through, there was so much history. I mean, it really, really touches the heart. So when we found what we did, I, I told my sister, I said, oh my God, we lived here. She, this legend talks about where we were born and raised. And I said, you can't get more significant than that. And it is our, it is our um, purpose to share things that come up from where we were born and raised. Because usually people that live in areas don't really know too much about where they live. And so we made it a point that that's what we would like to do in sharing with our Huna. And that's what we're proposing to do this year, coming back. With the help of Parker Ranch, Kahua Ranch, and Kupuna, they retrace the footsteps of Hi'iaka. It is no easy task as the dancers climb one of the landmark pu'u in the area and in the chant, Kala Hikiola. In the chant, Hi'iaka says, it is you, Kala Hikiola, famous woman of Kohala. The climb is worth it. Here amongst the wind, the mist, and rain, they dance their melee. Kahua ka'i o hi'iaka i kupole o pele ma kohala nui. Being there brings the legend to life. And Namakani Pyo, I guess we feel it. Namakani Pyo is that conflicting winds. So we, we, well, now we know when we're doing this, and this, this, this is what we're talking about right now. And now when you're feeling that Molao is, she's having, Molao start kicking up the dirt, and it's red dirt, you can see it all the way going down. You can see all of these mountains, it's all covered with beautiful red dirt. You can feel it, smell it, touch it, breathe it in, embrace it, he it, he it, and he it. <laughs> embrace it, embrace it, embrace it. In our emotions and how we're directing, we're not just talking about a mountain, but we're we're acknowledging it as a person, as a being that that was that stands there, and ooiya. Just it's to you, Kalahikiol, and how beautiful and magnificent it is. It's not just 
a mountain that everybody drives by every day. This is something, somebody that truly stands today and, and it just gives me chicken skin to um, stand here and know that um, Hiyaka, when she came and she stood there to look at Kalahikyo, she was in awe and she wasn't scared. She talks about her emotions and, and, and when she's at Kalahikiola, she's not, she's not afraid, she's not ready to battle. She's there and just in awe at this beautiful, magnificent mountain and that it's so warming and becoming to her and, and to know today that we're gonna walk amongst the Aina that she once walked is, um, is really overwhelming really overwhelming. And that I know that once we step foot on those grounds, um, our mele will come to life, most definitely, most definitely. The journey continues on some bumpy back roads surrounded by breathtaking scenery. The dancers stop to pick some popolo berries and leaves to show us how they create the dye for their costumes. They turn to veteran laymaker and author Marie McDonald for Kukua. She said you can use the leaves and you can also use the berries, the berries. But if you use the berries, you got to carefully take them, take the stems off because the stems produces another color. So you, you must break every leaf off. Okay, and then of course it, it gets pulverized afterwards. So we put them in cheesecloth and we just... I'm so hot. And the more than or the one that holds it into the cloth is the salt, is the pot, okay. Once the water is added, the mixture is pulverized. And you can see that green color start to come out and that's the color we're gonna use. The color will oxidize over time. So when, that's why we're not making our skirts till two weeks before. Um, what, what happens is that when you first use it, you, there, there's a sheen to it, a really bright, should true screen sheen, but after a few, like a week or two, you have that deep, deep green color. It's not difficult to get the green out of the leaves. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty fast. Once you get that color, all we need to do after that is brush it on. Whether you use one law hollow brush as they did in the old days, or whether you use a modern brush that will get you through it immediately. The color is stunning. They will also wear the le aki aki, made of a kind of grass from the Makai area. In their mele, Hi'iaka talks of the le aki aki, her garland of affection. We just came from the mountains uh, top of Kohala where Pili and Kalahikiola is, and we also stopped very briefly at Pu'uhue, and now we're at the third place in our mele that talks about Pu'uwepa. And we're standing on Pu'uwepa, and in the chat, um, there used to be a famous mo'o goddess that used to live here. Her name was Mo'okiri. And Hi'iaka is going to come to Pu'uepa and she's going to cow or do a chant to Mo'okiri. And in that chant, it will talk about how beautiful she is and how there's beautiful ilima that does not take water, that doesn't need water, that grows here. And so you'll see in our hand motions that we'll talk about that ilima. <laughs> But yeah, ilima used to grow profusely here, okay? And um, in the chat, it, it's the second, what we call vadana or uh, prophecy, that Hiyaka foresees that, and tells Mo'okini that one day she will become famous, that her name will stand for all time, and her name has certainly stand for all time, because we're, right now we're standing right at Mo'okini Heo. This is the, her last, um, the last place that she stops at before she's going to take her trip to Maui. As the sun prepares to end its journey, we look out into the waters where, according to legend, Hi'iaka left for Maui. It's been fabulous, I mean, just to know, to hear, well, to read the newspaper articles and um, finally realize, oh my God, she came through Kohala, you know? And we used to think, we lived here most of our life, and we used to think, oh, there's nothing much that really happens here. But to, when I finally 
you know, was doing the research and I found that those articles were actually in sequence of the same paper. That's what got me excited. I said, there's something here. And by the time I looked, I said, it is Ahua Ka'ishi's journey through Kuala. And I was totally excited. I said, this is what we're going to present for Mary Monarch this year and share with the rest of the world that Hiyaka did come through Kohala. Yeah.